I have lots of thoughts, as usual, but also mixed feelings about the announcements yesterday by Ghost Ship Games. To be honest, I was disappointed to learn that they're moving on from the old game. Not abandoning it completely. There will still be seasons, but they'll be a year out. It's obvious that Ghost Ship will turn even more time and attention away from the original Deep Rock Galactic. I love the game, with all its quirks and character. But as an old software developer who helped manage, maintain, and develop software that served millions of people, I understand the need to get away from an old platform. There were two adages we had with our older code. One, if you change anything, it'll break. So, you have to test everything that was touched by any changes, especially fixes, because those will break even more code than you think. And our stuff was software that went to military sites, went to rad hardened launch development groups, went to medical equipment developers, so we had a fully automated test suite and testing groups in two other countries. This was not gaming code. Fixes still broke unintended stuff, so the suite was to make sure we would find the breaks so they would never get to customers. Two, the code can only reflect our understanding of what was needed when we created the architecture. It will never do what we couldn't think of doing. In order to do new things, it has to be refactored, replaced, or restructured. Those who are like, how hard could it be to XYZ don't understand that at all. With our code, we had to rewrite it every five years from the ground up so we could catch up to the new platforms, new ways of thinking about and building code, and to use new possible architectures because all of software engineering had advanced. That's when we could incorporate our new understanding of what our customers were going to need. Code isn't infinitely malleable. It's an embodiment of how the team of developers or architects thought the problem needed to be solved at the time of writing, and it can be very rigid and breakable when it's changed too much. Season 4's Bugfest right at launch showed what happens when too much gets shoehorned in. Testing or not, the structure can't support more than the originally intended expansions of weapons, biomes, mission types, and it was probably getting big enough and unwieldy enough to have a lot of unintended crossplay. So, the practical coder side of me rejoices that they're creating Rogue Core as separate code. That they're going to be able to take advantage of everything they learned in the last eight years and do it better with a more modern engine. They're going to be able to re-architect the code to take advantage of everything they want in it. The gamer side of me is pretty excited about everything they talked about having in the new game, especially the new opportunities for co-op and team play with the new mechanics. We'll get to be an elite team of DRG dwarves getting sent on the toughest of missions into the core. They're keeping the cave generation, the co-op gameplay, the PvE, and the progression through multiple missions with experience allowing you to gain more abilities, just like with DRG. They're getting rid of classes, completely changing up the weapons, power-up ability unlocks, and traversal mechanics, as well as creating a completely different atmosphere and getting to do new biomes and mission types. They're also keeping the open development style for Rogue Core, inviting the community in early to have the whole community be a part of the process. The early announcement, even before they had anything to show, was to open the door to that and to make for more transparent communications. That was a very intriguing part of DRG's development that I missed out on, and it'll be interesting having a chance, perhaps, to be involved in Rogue Core's development. All characters will start with just a pistol and a face suit, which has a particular ability. The demonstrated one was a time warp ability, which is really out of our usual experience and sounds fascinating. And as we progress through a four or five stage mission that ends in a boss fight, we'll unlock abilities, weapons, and be able to mine for temporary upgrades and power-ups by getting Exponite and feeding it into a processor drone. The interesting thing is that these upgrades and power-ups will be something that the whole team has to choose. And in a public lobby, you'll be able to vote for what you want. But as an actual team, you'll be able to discuss and choose what would fit everyone. I think that there'll also be long-term upgrades in weapon choices and suit abilities as we get more experience. The missions will each have an objective that is optional, but the objectives will reward you for accomplishing them. There will be no mineable material other than Exponite, 
which sidesteps a host of issues that happened with long-term DRG play. It really does show that they've been listening and understanding some of the fundamental problems with how DRG plays for those of us that stuck with it. There will be mid-mission stations where there might be resupplies, new weapons, or gear to be picked up. Traversal tools will be discovered, and I'm half hoping that people will be able to trade tools or they'll get to choose which ones the teams take. But they did say that the tools will be new. And they also had the interesting statement that power progression will be shown by showing you how much damage you deal as you go. A side note on their roadmap said that the team will select power-ups and artifacts. I'm now super curious about artifacts and what they'll do. And if, as with the original DRG, the development team will make them enhance the co-op experience. There were a lot of folks in the dev stream chat who were really upset that Ghost Ship Games is going to split its attention between DRG and Rogue Core. I get that. But I think that they've been doing that for a while, for all that they've said they've only been working on Rogue Core for the last two or three months. The roadmap shows that Season 5 will be themed by Rogue Corps and will be released next June before Rogue Corps comes out as a prelude. I'm disappointed in eight more months of Lithophage and that my favorite game isn't getting anything new for a full year, but I am glad that they actually talked about it and are upfront about why. And they're going to put a balancing and bug fix release out in November. But it's also cool we'll get something new to look forward to. And I'm glad that Ghost Ship as a company is being bold about doing what's good for them and their future as developers as well as publishers. And it's obvious that they're now steering more into the publisher role and using resources to manage and direct all the games that they're publishing on all the formats they've expanded to doing. I'm unlikely to get into Spell Rogue, Dark Swarm, or the board game. But I have been enjoying DRG Survivor a lot. The demo's been a lot of fun to play. I like the changes they've made since the early access, which Axis and I played together. The new progress bar at the top is really nice compared to killing a specific number of enemies, especially with the new markers of what to expect when. They've really balanced the progression equipment so that more of them are more viable, and the OP ones are less obviously better, and the long-term upgrades are all a little bit more usable. As an example, the magnets aren't as common, so the reach upgrade is actually useful now. Survivor is an enjoyable game that I can just spend time with. I like that it takes the Survivor genre and really puts it in the DRG context, with the breakable terrain, the enemy selection, and the overclocks on the weapons. I love using exploders to crowd clear. The nice thing with Rogue Core is that I've had a good number of friends who aren't interested in DRG's gameplay loop at all anymore. They're just bored with it. They've moved on to a lot of newer games, Having something in a year that's entirely new may pique their interest in a game that I'm interested in again, and I'll get a reason to bring them back down to Hoxis. So, thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed, and I hope to see you down in the mines. Autogyro, 